Hello friends. So this week, instead of just your regular reading vlog, I wanted to do something a little bit different, kind of challenge myself a bit, go off of the mood reading vibe that I have been in lately and see if we could accomplish something. So this week I wanted to see if I could read five books in five days. So we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five days left of the month of March to see how much we can read. I need a new audiobook today and I need a new physical book today. I love that fresh start feeling of needing a new audio and physical book in the same day. So I took a little browse of my shelf, decided what books I want to read, but then I had a random one come in through the library. So that's why there's one not from my TBR shelf, which I guess I should start out by saying the challenge to read five books in five days. I wanted all of these books to come from my physically owned TBR shelf, no libraries, no purchasing new books or any such thing. I just wanted to get to some of the books that I own, that I have been anticipating reading lately, that I've had my eye on and been very, very excited for. So with the exception of the one library loan that came in, the other four books that I'm hoping to read in the next five days are all from my physical TBR shelf. The reason that I'm accepting the library loan is because it's a book that sort of fit in with the other video idea I had. It's a book that has been recommended to me nonstop lately, and it is a book that I really wanna read as I'm carrying on with this momentum from reading the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois and dealing with the topics of racism. So. Here is my little mini stack of books that I have chosen from my TBR shelf. And let's go over the synopsis for each of them and the page count, because actually I think I should add that up. I don't know how many total pages this will be, but this is very, very, very ambitious for me. You guys will know that I already know if I did it or not, because you could tell by my hair that I'm filming this after the five days are over. So let's go over the synopsis of each of these and then we'll roll the footage to see if I made it. We first have Weird Fucks by Lynn Tillman. This is 108 pages. This is a bookstagram cover by. When I purchased this, I really didn't know much at all what this was about. I just knew I wanted to own this cover. I think it is beautiful. I wanted it on my shelves and it is like short story collections. It's very large font, a lot of spacing. So I do anticipate that this will be very quick to get through. Okay, so let's just read you the synopsis first. A young woman drifts through dimly lit bars and rented rooms, reporting from the erogenous zones of New York and Europe. Encountering increasingly bizarre sexual situations, she turns her curious, comic, and fierce eye onto the contemporary world of sex and desire. The men of this world evade and simper. They pray, preen, and fall hopelessly in love. In the narrator's deadpan portraits, we see young women indulging their freedom through hope and disappointment, and young men wearing various guises of masculinity. This novella surprises with unlikely fucks, disturbing fucks, outlandish fucks, and some truly weird fucks. Sorry, mom. All written with a smart, elegant, and, and tough style, which could only be that of Lynn Tillman. So what do we know from that? Absolutely nothing. We're going to have to read and find out. My legs are completely asleep, so I had to adjust how I'm sitting and adjust the camera. I need to stop kneeling when I film videos. I feel like it's going to have bad repercussions someday. Okay, the next one I pulled from my shelves is My Body by Emily Radzikowski. This is a memoir. She is an actress and a model. So these powerful essays mark a blazing literary debut. Emily interrogates beauty, sex, power, objectification, fame, and betrayal, both by self and others with lucidity and scorched earth honesty. I read these pages breathless with recognition and the thrill of reading a new voice telling it like it is. She knows the pain that lives in every woman and she isn't afraid to link arms and say she's been there and that it hurt. This is a book for all women trying to place their bodies on the map of consumption versus control and all who want to better understand their impulses it left me changed. So this is definitely going to take a look at feminism, misogyny, sexism, just a lot of things that I really care about and really resonate with me. This is one that I bought when I was having like a sad day as I was going through Target and I saw it and I was like, okay, it's time to buy this. And I bought this and a plant for myself. 
that day. And I just really don't want to keep putting off the books that I'm so interested in when I want to read them. So I decided now is the time. Another Instagram buy is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. Now she is also an actress and a comedian and she's somebody that I had never heard of before hearing about this book on Bookstagram. I saw this cover and I was interested, but then somebody started posting little snippets of the inside of this and I was like, wow, that hits home. I want to look into this. So this is her memoir. To see the world through Jenny Slate's eyes is to see it as though for the first time, shimmering with strangeness and possibility. As she will remind you, we live on an ancient ball that rotates around a bigger ball made up of lights and gases that are science gases, not farts. Don't be immature. Heartbreak, confusion, and misogyny stalk this blue-green sphere, yes, but it is also a place of wild delight and unconstrained vitality, a place where we can start living as soon as we are born and we can be born at any time. In her dazzling, impossible-to-categorize debut, Slate channels the pain and beauty of life in writing so fresh, so new, and so burstingly alive that we catch her vision like a fever and bring it back out into the bright day with us, and everything has changed. I love memoirs. I love reading about other people's experiences and how they can relate to our own. So yeah, this was a bookstagram buy. See if I can finish it. And the last book from my physical TBR shelf is Luster by Raven Leilani because I need an audiobook and this was available through Hoopla. This was also a cover buy on Bookstagram. I saw this cover and I think it's stunning and I needed to own it. So Edie is just trying to survive. She's messing up in her dead end admin job in an all white office, is sleeping with the wrong men and has failed at the only thing that means anything to her painting. No one seems to care that she doesn't really know what she's doing with her life beyond looking for her next hookup. Then she starts dating Eric, a white middle-aged archivist with a suburban family, including a wife who has sort of agreed to an open marriage and an adopted black daughter who doesn't have a single person in her life who can show her how to do her hair. As if navigating the constantly shifting landscape of sexual and racial politics as a young black woman wasn't already hard enough with nowhere else left to go, Edie finds herself falling headfirst into Eric's home and family life. So that is this one. I really haven't heard much talk about this at all on booktube or bookstagram from people who have actually read it. Now, the final book, the one that came in through the library at just the right timing is Kindred by Octavia Butler. And this I chose because one, I need two audiobooks at that length to listen to in these five days. And two, my friends keep suggesting this to me recently based on me reading The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois and me reading Passing by Nella Larson with similar themes. It is a sci-fi book that I've wanted to read for quite some time since I've read Parable of the Sower. And before picking it up, all I knew is that it just deals with a woman who is time traveling back into the antebellum South where there is still slavery and she has to help save a little boy who needs her help. And we follow her throughout a timeline in the South, in the past and in her current timeline and what's going on in her life now. So those are the five books that I wanna read in these next five days. And it's a lot, it's a lot, but, oh, I didn't say the, the page length. Okay, so Kindred, I think is like 265 or 95 pages, something like that. But it's about a 10 hour audiobook. Luster is 227 pages. Once again, nine or 10 hour audiobook. So tw about 20 hours of audiobook listening. This memoir, Little Weirds by Jenny Slate is 223 pages, but there's a lot of like blank pages in between and stuff, so. And then the one that I didn't say is My Body by Emily. And this is 237 pages. This is a little less spacing and a little more dense. So let's roll the footage of how the week went and we'll do a little wrap up at the end. Okay, so the first book that I want to update you guys about is Weird Fucks by Lynn 
Tillman. Now being completely honest, you guys know that this was just a bookstagram cover by, needed to own this cover. I absolutely still adore it. And the title, The Hot Pink, The Naked Woman, it just speaks to my soul. So I wanted to own this. I did not know what to expect going into it. I can tell you this is a great book to read in an afternoon. I read it in one sitting in a Sunday afternoon. I didn't think I'd have time to read an entire book that day, but I did and it only took about an hour or so because it's 100 pages. I want to say that I absolutely adore the writing style. It's very blunt, to the point, detached, very unique and refreshing because it's not elaborate and it's not flowery. It just simply leaves you wanting more, but in a good way. So I really liked the writing. I found myself feeling like I didn't really care too much about any of the characters or the encounters. And I don't necessarily think that the sexual encounters themselves were like weird. So I don't know exactly what the title means. There's just one page I tabbed and I really liked the quote, I'll read it to you quickly, it says, the mechanics of sex make it easier for a woman to betray herself, which leads perhaps to her having different feelings about sex from a man whose sex organ is always a sign. We make love and once it's over, I feel relieved, like having gone to the dentist and just having one cavity. I love that. When we awaken in the morning, I feel like talking, not rushing from his bed. By this time, I'm involved in something. Uninspired sex can win a masochist. It certainly makes sex not at all central to the relationship. It's so easy to forget. And so I felt that I really liked him and was not just attracted to him. Here is puritanism, liking someone because the sex is bad. Um, I like the first part of that, like the dentist part, I guess, because it's a relief when it's over, because certainly sex can be that way, a relief when it's over. So I don't know, this is something I think I will revisit in the future. I don't think I'm done with it. I don't, I think definitely some of it went over my head, but I think that it was almost like her going through different emotions, her taking her power back, her saying, okay, yeah, I've had these relationships with these men, but I'm going to choose to continue on with them or end them when I want. It's my call and it's not up to the men. And sometimes the men are left wanting more to be in the relationship or sometimes she gets her heart broken by the relationship ending. So I just like how much it explored that. I liked the different ways that we go through her emotions because it's certainly not just, she's not always in love or attached or cold and detached. It's a variety of emotions. I guess the moral of this story is I just really enjoyed watching this woman's experiences with sex through her lifespan with different partners, different experiences and her sort of owning it, taking control of it. And sometimes she didn't, sometimes she did things she didn't wanna do. Sometimes she partook in things that she would have liked not to, but then at other times, she did things just because she could do them. And I like that portrayal and I think that representation is important to show a woman doing things that generally maybe a man would be known for doing and accepted for, whereas a woman isn't as accepted doing. So I don't know if that's making a whole lot of sense, but I will say I know this got a lot of bad reviews on Goodreads um, because I think that a lot of people are just really missing what she's trying to say. And I will say that if you've read this book and you get like the deeper meaning, please message me and let me know because I too feel like some of it went over my head, but because I liked the prose so much, I really would like to read more from her. It's definitely like a sad, hopeless, melancholy, dark type of book. It is not happy or romantic in any way, shape or form. So yeah, one book done. Let's see how many more I can get through in these five days. Five books, five days. Can't she do it? Who would I recommend this to? Very few people. If you like short stories, if you like very simplistic prose, if you like very detached writing style, um, if you like things that are a bit weird and not on the nose and make you think a lot, and you're not sure what the point of it is when you're done reading, but if any of those things sound off-putting to you, probably skip this one but I'm glad I read it. I am. She has another book in these editions. It's lime green. I think I'm going to buy it just because one, I love lime green and pink and two, I'm really curious about this author's writing. So like I said, one book done.
Okay, friends, I just wanted to show you this week's protein cake. <laughs> I've been watching Hannah Mae's new vlog, but this is one banana, one half scoop of protein powder because the protein powder I used, it's like more than one serving that I need. And then a half a cup of oats blended. And so it's nice and cakey. It is peanut butter flavored oats. So I put like cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, salt, vanilla. And then this is chocolate PB2 with cocoa powder added. And then I do the sugar-free jelly. So let me show you once it's mixed. It's not gonna look very pretty, but oh my God, it's delicious. Okay, sorry the writing is so bad, but there you have it. Chocolate PB&J banana oat protein cake for like post-workout dinner dessert. I had a salad and zucchini <laughs> as my like actual dinner. And then this is after and oh my God, it's so good. Okay, I just want to give a quick update after I just finished listening to Kindred by Octavia Butler while I was showering and getting ready for bed, as you can see. But yeah, I will say that I enjoyed it overall. Definitely recommend it. It's worth the read. It's worth listening to. It felt longer than it should have, I will say. I was just chatting with a friend and they said they read it super fast and I was like, I feel like it's longer than it needs to be, probably like 400 pages or so. And then I looked it up and it's like 298 pages and I was like, oh, it feels longer than that. If you're wondering why my face looks so shiny, it is like all of my nighttime serums and such. Let me know if you guys are ever interested in that for vlog content. It was perfect timing to read it. My friend Joanna really recommended that I read it um, after finishing the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. So I was just following on with the momentum from reading that and reading Passing by Nella Larson. And it just felt like the perfect timing. So I, I'm really glad that I read it now. And I think I will have had like peak enjoyment level reading it now versus waiting a while. I will say that I enjoyed the time travel sci-fi aspects for what they were. I was glad that there was not more emphasis put on the sci-fi time travel elements. I didn't really care about like how all of it worked. And I think that it was a really unique way for Octavia Butler to sort of show what she wanted to show of this woman going back in time and following the life of her ancestors basically through slavery. And there's obviously so many important topics touched upon here. Our main character being married to a white man in the present day timeline and just everything that's normal to us now, even to her as a black woman, knowing the history of the United States, knowing the history of black people in the United States, but having to come face to face with it and being sent back in time to the antebellum South and being put in the face of a slavery and just how much strength and courage she had, but also how shocked even she was at times. So there were so many things I really appreciated with this. I think that the character establishment and relationships was really well done. I enjoyed learning about the characters. I mean, we have like three sort of main characters, the main character, Dana, and then Rufus, the boy that she's constantly going back in time to help save. I enjoyed all of their interactions and how their relationship changed with one another. I think the writing wasn't my favorite. I think I enjoyed the writing more in Parable of the Sower. I can't wait to read more from her. So I think another thing is it was very dry in the explanations. And so we have like heartbreakingly abhorrent, tragic, gut-wrenching scenes happening, but I don't know if she specifically chose to make them be sort of toned down for the sake of not being too graphic or in depth for the time being maybe. I'm not totally sure because I feel like they could have been written in a way to be more impactful. And I don't mean 
that she should have been gratuitous by any means in being more descriptive with some of the things. I just think maybe it didn't feel as impactful as it could have or some of the things didn't hit home hard enough because of the style that it was written in. But that's probably just mostly a personal preference, honestly. I think that I'd be very curious to know if anybody else felt that way about the writing in this book. But yeah, I definitely want to continue the Parable of the Sower duology. I know it's a trilogy that didn't get to get finished from my understanding. And then I would like to read Pattern Master as well. So totally worth the read. I definitely absolutely recommend this book to basically anyone because it's like historical fiction, has very important themes discussed, and it also has like a sci-fi time travel element. So you pretty much can't go wrong with this book recommendation. And I do think it's something that we can all learn something from or at least appreciate what it said and what it was doing in the time that it was written. So yeah, I think that to be honest, well, I feel maybe this much underwhelmed currently because this book is so hyped and highly praised. I really truly think that this book will stick with me and that I will like it more and more as more time passes. I do see myself thinking back upon this book as something that I really enjoyed just because there was so much nuance to the discussions, to the relationships, to the situation. Nothing was black and white. Nothing, I don't mean that as a pun, nothing was a um, cut or dry situation. Everything was a situation that had to be like worked through and manipulated and just the things that they had to go through to try to survive in the past timeline was so sad. But like I said, I think that it really shows the lengths that that people had to go to just to make it through a day and different things that people put up with to survive or to try to escape. I don't know, like I said, I really do think that this requires a lot of processing and thought and I think it'd be a great book to have conversations about as you're reading it. Like I think it would be a really good buddy read book to talk about like chapter by chapter or at least section by section because there's different sections in the book. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for my copy to come in the mail I ordered whatever pictures over here from Book Depository because I like that cover the best. I don't care for the other covers very much, but thank you, Joanna, and everyone else for the recommendation because I did really enjoy this. And like I said, even though I feel mildly underwhelmed right now, I think it'll sit with me and really mean more and more to me as more time passes. So I will update you guys tomorrow and see what audiobook I start next. I've meant to read books from my physical TBR, as I said at the beginning of this vlog. So Luster was the one I had planned on reading. However, Sitting Pretty came in from the library, which I wanted to read for Disability Awareness Month, which is March, and it is still March. So I'm very, very torn. I'm gonna sleep on it. We'll see what I pick up in the morning because it's about bedtime right now. I'm either gonna work on some eating disorder workbook stuff or start my next physical read, which I'll update you guys with tomorrow as well. of a girl who's been up since 3 a.m. But I started Luster by Raven Leilani and we're headed to the gym so I don't have to go after work and I can sleep because I can't sleep ever. <laughs> Okay, friends, let's do another little pre-work check in here because that seems to be when I have the time lately since I never sleep. Do not recommend living the life I live. <laughs> so the second book that I completed physically reading during this little mini readathon is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. Now I have to admit this is completely 
an Instagram buy, a cover buy, once again, seems to be what a lot of the books in this reading vlog are. Okay, so Jenny Slate, it says she's an actress and stand-up comedian. I don't know who she is. I had never heard of her. I just saw some bookstagrammers posting some excerpts of pages and I thought, sounded like something that would really resonate with me. So I ended up absolutely loving my time reading this book. I thought that the parts that resonated with me, they hit hard. They were really, really well done. I do think that there were definitely parts where I felt maybe a little bit more confused or parts that I didn't relate to as much, but that was made up for by the ones that I really did relate to. So this is told in all these little short stories and some of them are only a couple paragraphs, as you can see, and then some are several pages long. And if you look here, I mean, I have tabbed quite a few pages. I wouldn't even know where to begin in trying to find something to read you guys. Okay, in this story, Blue Hour, she's talking about different shades of blue, and she says, it was not necessarily a choice at the outset, but now it is certainly a point of pride that I functionally dwell in the realms that I was once afraid of. The darks and the in-betweens, they all fortify me. I am a citizen of many dimensions, and now I slip between them easily. I never slip away from myself by simplifying myself. I can't become smaller to fit into a crouching love in somebody else's meager world. I don't do that anymore. I have calmed down. I have consolidated. I have come through the reckoning that I required. Oh, I just love that. So there are so many things in here that like speak to my soul. Little mentions of being alone and fine versus alone and devastated. I want to go back and physically tab this and uh, underline some of the pages that I have turned down. Now, a lot of the writing is pretty nonsensical and just doesn't have a lot of rhyme or reason to it, but it's beautifully done in a way that really works for me. Like this sentence, I had to tab. She's remembering a night and she says, we felt young inside ourselves after making such a wild request and that we looked to each other in that back seat and could have died from such radical happiness. We whispered, should we just collide and burst into atomic dust here in the back seat? I love the way that that's written. I really liked the story that's titled Fur. She's talking about this layer of fur that we can't see and she says, I've been trying to destroy myself and I don't want to anymore. Later on, who will let me be the real animal of myself? I love this part. Okay, so she's talking about this feminist documentary she's watching and she's like, why are, why are men so gross? But still we say that they are heroes. And if we try to even talk about it with these men, they get incredibly upset and defensive and call us cruel or insecure, but really you can't have it both ways. You can't do the thing, but then not want to ever discuss it. If you want to hide it, maybe it's not just because it is private, but because you know, you really do know that it is gross. This is what I think about as I crack a Miller High Life and vaguely decide that I should not continue to have cynical cyclical relationships with gross men and then I will be sort of an ant to the world and begin to collect sex toys made by other feminists. Hi, hello, Ben there. But then she goes on to say, or maybe I will meet and fall in love with an actually good man, I think, which also can happen. So I loved so much of what this had to say about feminism, the patriarchy, about love and loss and grief and sadness and hope and being strong and finding who you are. I just think this is a very relatable novel to someone, especially like me in their 30s, or I think even in your 20s, you for sure would relate to this. I don't wanna give this a specific age range. I just thought that it really resonated with me at this time of my life and definitely would have over the past probably decade as well. So if you are interested in any of those topics and you like things that are written in a quirky way, like I said, some of this, it's not meant to be read literally. Like there are several ch chapters that say I was born and then she discusses about that. And then there's lots that say I died and they're like metaphors for different things. So um, yeah, I'm just so impressed with this. And this is the kind of book that you can read so quickly. I read it in a couple days and it's just really my vibe. It's really my thing. And these books mean more to me sometimes than like, I don't know, super intense 900 page tomes that clearly have some pretty articulate planning that went into it. Sometimes these speak to the soul a little bit more. So I cannot tell you how pleased I am to have read this for this mini readathon and 
I will definitely revisit this. Yo, we gotta talk. Excuse the red face, post-workout right now. Um, and I just get very red when I exercise. I actually get like heat rash everywhere. Anyways, holy you know what? I have finished Luster by Raven Leilani. It's by far my favorite thing I've finished in this little reading challenge so far. Why is this so underrated? Why is this so underhyped? Why is it so rarely discussed on booktube? I see it on Instagram a lot because that's where I saw this cover and that's what made me want to pick it up because it's absolutely stunning. And I love these like bright orange end pages. It's just a beautiful book. But oh my God, I did not expect to like this book so much. And I will say right now, if you like Sally Rooney, you'll probably like this. If you enjoy conversations with friends, you'll probably like this. I think I read a lot of things with similar, not similar themes that they're the same by any means, but just with within the same topics, which is cool. Like a lot of the same topics discussed, like open marriages and racism, a lot of that this month. Okay, so what I loved about this as with Conversations with Friends, which I read earlier this month, it was like unput downable, compulsively listenable. I never want to stop listening to it. I listened to the entirety of it, I think within one day and a couple hours, because I just found myself making excuses to do things where I could listen to the audiobook. I also had insomnia and I couldn't sleep, so that made me have a lot more listening time. So the writing was just fantastic, in my opinion. Another thing, that has to do with the writing is just the word choice, the quotes in this. I would constantly be reading and think, oh my God, I need to go back, find this passage in the book and tab it. And I, I think the audiobook was excellent, by the way. The narrator did a fabulous job, but I wish that I had read it physically so that I could underline these and really focus on the quotes that stood out to me while I was reading it. So I do plan to revisit it and go back because a lot of this just really resonated with me. I think I enjoyed this actually more than Conversations with Friends this month because I feel like it dealt with racism and classism and had a bit more like serious topics involved while focusing on romantic relationships or friendship dynamics or like almost mother parental relationships or figures. Plus it also had a little touch of Star Wars and fandom at the end with going to like a Comic-Con. Um, so obviously I love that as well. I can't describe any complaints. Like I really do not think that, that I have any complaints with this. I think it was the perfect length, about 225 pages. It was, it told the story it needed to tell. I loved the way that it ended. I loved the result of everyone's relationship with one another. I think that I like things that don't end like happily ever after. And so I appreciated that. Um, and I feel like it's just not a story that needed more explanation than we got. So let me read you a couple quotes. I just Googled luster quotes. Um, the first one says, I think of how keenly I've been wrong. I think of all the gods I have made out of feeble men. It's not that I want exactly this, to have a husband or home security system that for the length of our marriage never goes off. It's that there are gray anonymous hours like this. Hours when I am desperate, when I am ravenous, when I know how a star becomes a void. I am an open book, I say, thinking of all the men who have found it illegible. I am inclined to pray, but on principle, I don't. God is not for women. He is for the fruit. He makes you want and he makes you wicked. And while you sleep, he plants a seed in your womb that will be born to die. He wants me to be myself like a leopard might be herself in a city zoo, inert waiting to be fed, not out in the wild with tendon in her teeth. Aren't these amazing? If I am honest, all of all my relationships have been like this, parsing the intent of the jaws that lock around my head. Like, is he kidding or is he hungry? In other words, all of it, even the love is a violence. I just don't know. I feel like the majority of those sentences and quotes and everything in this book truly spoke to me and I loved it so much. Even with good men, you are always waiting for the surprise. Oh, this is, this is a tough one. We were bonded in our mutual hatred of our bodies, though my hatred was adolescent and hers was infinitely more developed, partly a trick of her newly sober brain, which found in food a substitute, a substitute for the narcotics that had kept her lean. By the time she killed herself, she would still be 11 pounds shy of her goal. So there's definitely eating disorder mention. Yeah, I'll stop now because I feel like I could just read a million more quotes from this, but if it sounds interesting to you and you're not a big romance fan, 
but you like more literary or more like, I don't even like using the word millennial and I don't know if this is what it is and it's not that she's even super young. Well, yeah, she's 23. JK, she's younger than me by a lot. <laughs> so, um, but I felt like I definitely still was able to relate with her and I found the dynamics of the relationships so dang inter interesting and I really love the social commentary it had. So, dang, I can't recommend this book enough. I feel like it's gonna be hard to beat this book for a while. Just really enjoyed it and it's so quick. Okay, you guys, it's time to talk about the last book that I finished for this challenge. First, I just wanted to thank Muse Book Club for sending me this super adorable, cozy crew neck sweater that I'm absolutely obsessed with. And it is literally so soft and adorable. Like I love the font. They're not paying me for this. They just sent me this. Um, and I am very happy. I actually wear it all the time at home because it's so soft and cozy and comfy. They have adorable co colors. They have like a heather gray one and green and then like rainbow one that i want them all funny that i should mention muse when muses are mentioned in this book but yeah i just want to say thank you for this and i'll link them down below if you guys want to get one but let's talk about the book now that i'm done babbling about my clothing so i finished my body by emily radzikowski and this was such a shock i mean i purchased this because i thought i would enjoy it because it sounded like something I wanted to read, dealing with sexism, feminism, misogyny, all of these themes that I enjoy reading about. Anyways, coming from an actress and a model, but it really packed a punch harder than I thought it would. And it was just heartbreaking, disgusting. Some of the events that happened to her, I mean, and some of what she's had to endure. One thing that I think I didn't expect to take away from this is how much it really made me evaluate internalized misogyny that we all have and how it's so easy as somebody who considers herself a feminist who promotes um love of other women love of our bodies love of everybody to have these concepts that have been ingrained into us from society from such a young age and how easy it still is to judge other women even when we aren't trying to, even when we don't mean to. And it is so sad and heartbreaking that that's just something that is like second nature to people and we have to fight so hard against it even when you don't really think so so if you can't see there's a million pages that i turned down so what i really enjoyed about this is the evaluation i think of what it meant to her to say she's somebody who enjoys feeling sexy who gets empowerment from loving her body and showing her body and I am somebody like that as well. I'm not a modest person. I am empowered by feeling sexy and loving my body and showing my body. And I absolutely respect both choices, modesty and those who don't consider themselves modest. I don't know if modest is the proper word to use right now, but I loved the evaluation upon how society views that and how it's not that black and white and how you're often so judged and it's so easy for men and women alike to just say, well, you're asking for it. You're asking for this attention, this backlash, this type of behavior because you are naked. Stop being naked. Stop being half naked. You're nothing if you are not naked. I, I hate that with a passion that I can't even describe to you. Why cannot women be smart and sexy, beautiful and compassionate and caring? Why does someone's appearance have to define them, especially when it comes to being what people would consider provocative or showing themselves naked? We all have bodies. We all have brains. And it just doesn't make sense to me why women are so harshly judged for loving their bodies, loving feeling sexy, loving feeling comfortable in their body and the harsh criticism that comes along with that. But it was also just very interesting to see from an actress and a model truly how hard it is and the things that I think it's easy from the outside at home in my comfy house in Michigan to not realize some of the just absolutely terrible things that they do have to go through because of pressures of society, because they are wanting so desperately to make 
themselves successful or to make a career because they have no other choice because they need to pay the bills and who are we to judge what anybody else does when it doesn't affect us um so anyways i truly loved this one thing i took away really was when she was pregnant and she was on a bike ride with her husband and her best friend and she comes to the realization she's like i am with the people dearest to me on a bike ride on a beautiful day don't you dare wuss out i'm skipping a whole bunch of parts in between she says it doesn't matter what i look like i realized blood pulsed up through my thighs and i thought again of the tiny life housed in my body my closest friend and my husband grinned at me lovingly without saying a word we rode on my eyes welled with tears i wanted to cry out thank you what a joy life can be in this body because she oftentimes thinks about how her body might look well performing certain activities and such. And it's just so sad because I relate to it so hard. Um, times where nobody cares what you look like. No one cares. Your body is doing something for you. Of course, it might not look perfect. It looks like it's working in times of exercise or stress, whatever it may be. She's thinking about how she looks when she cries um, and just different things that a woman should never have to think about. A man should never have to think about. We're all human beings. We all have bodies and things are normal. I also like this quote. It says, her therapist is asking her, where does your anger go? How do you release it? And she says, I don't. No one likes an angry woman. She is the worst kind of villain, a witch, obnoxious and ugly and full of spite and bitterness, shrill. I do anything to avoid that feeling, anything to stop myself from being that woman. I try to make anything resembling anger seem spunky and charming and sexy. I fold into something small, tuck it away. I invoke my most reliable trick. I project sadness, something vulnerable and tender, something welcoming, a thing to be tended to. And then her therapist says, how about you come and break some things? Um, which I love that. I don't relate to that. Uh, I think women should be angry. But yeah, I, I loved her discussion about that because I'm sure other people related to that. There was, ironically, a lot of discussion about muses. She's talking about how someone she knew that took her own life, but she was so praised for her body and how beautiful she was. And it says, what becomes of the artist's models? I am wondering if many of my readers have not stood before a masterpiece of lovely sculpture or remarkable painting of a young girl, her very abandonment of draperies accentuating rather than diminishing her modesty and purity and ask themselves the question, where is she now, this model who was so beautiful? I think of her and the other naked women who line the walls and fill the halls of museums, some so ancient the color has washed from their bodies and their marble heads have fallen off. It would be easy to mistake these displays for symbols of respect for an honor, but what were their lives and what were their names? No one remembers. Just like little things too, like this man saying, he was talking about like, don't rape me on this deal. And someone said, can you not say that? And then he's like mad about not being able to use the word rape as in like take advantage anymore and just like regular common discussion and like how could that possibly offend somebody to stop saying that another man is talking about how he didn't know if she was empowered by her nakedness or if she just enjoyed the attention i felt dizzy as i wondered the same thing what does true empowerment even feel like is it feeling wanted is it commanding someone's attention and then she's talking about always being in a bikini or being half naked and she says no one takes me seriously and she's talking about her friend who started dressing differently to get a different type of attention and she says is that the way to be taken seriously i wondered covering up your body and dressing like you're going to see the queen of england drying her hair brown to be considered serious i really like this line too it's a, a between her and her husband this conversation it says He's saying, come on, baby, you're a capitalist too, admit it. And she was annoyed and she says, I'm trying to succeed in a capitalist system, but that doesn't mean I like the game. Like I said, I worked the system. He shakes his head, fuck capitalism, but until it's fucked, keep getting that bag. Is a quote that he was reading and like, relatable, like you understand why people have to go to the extremes that they do to try to work the system. So I won't read any more quotes, I'll leave you with that, but wow, 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 wow. I just thought this was absolutely a shocker of how much I loved it. Okay, so let's do the quickest little recap here. In the last five days, Sunday through Thursday, the last five days of March, I read five books. Five books for a total of 1,093 pages, which is a lot. Two of them were audiobooks for about 20 hours of audiobook listening time. Now let's rank the books that I read. My least favorite, so coming in at number five of the week, 
is Little Weirds by Lynn Tillman. Just didn't resonate with me quite enough. Coming in at number four is Kindred by Octavia Butler. Good read, but a little bit disappointing. Coming in at number three is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. A lot of this resonated very much with me, but I think some of it was a little lighthearted to really impact me as much as the other two. Coming in at number two is My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. This memoir was so thought provoking, so important, and I will not soon forget this. And coming in at number one, my very favorite book that I read in this past five days is Luster by Raven Leilani. Absolutely wonderful. So surprised by how much I loved it, and I highly recommend this book. So there we have five books in five days. I did it. Did you guys think I would? Let me know your thoughts on these books. Have you read any of them, and which are your favorites if you have, or are you more inclined to pick them up now that I discussed them? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.